Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 55 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Alright, I just made a new room. And look at me being all prepared ahead of times. I made it exactly one chunk. Look at me. Look at how cool I am. Look, everybody, I did it. I did all one chunk. I planned ahead. How amazing is that? Not very dire-like, is it? But I did it. Uh, so, yeah, I totally did it. Oh, you got picked up, didn't you? Yeah, we got some junk. That's okay. Yoinks. Recorded my location on the warp scroll. Uh, so, hey, speaking of, let's go get that room added to our teleporter. So this is going to be my reactor's room, uh, as you could have probably guessed. So you're going to go back here. Um... I should probably get you back to this, dude. Yeah. Uh, so reactor's room is going to go here. And this is source stone. I can put you guys away for the time being. Cool. And then you go here, and then you go here, and we should do something to indicate that that's a reactor, like mechanism-y, reactor-y type doohickiness. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a rotor. Blade. Yeah, the turbine blade. That'll look like a reactor to me. So between episodes, I made sure that all the auto craftings was made. I auto crafted all the components that I think I'm going to need. I may have missed a couple, but I think I got a majority of it, uh, which is cool. And we should be good to go. I think we'll find out. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I forgot something. I'm sure I forgot something. We'll find out. Cool. So now this should points right into here. I love it. I love it. It's so cool. Just being able to teleport around the world like that with like a nice little central teleport room is really neat to me. It's just something that I enjoy. So uh, in today's episode, we're building reactors and turbines. So there's two pieces uh, to the, the reactor and turbine setup. It's a reactor and turbine, as I indicated. Uh, reactors, you need to fill up with a bunch of water, and then you have to feed it um, nuclear fuel. And then when you activate it, it'll generate steam. So it'll turn the water into steam. Then you create a multi-block turbine, which you pipe the steam into. The steam will spin a rotor, which will generate RF. And then the steam condenses back down into water and can be fed back into the nuclear reactor. Now, my strong recommendation is that you always pretty much have uh, the reactor getting tons and tons of water constantly so use a sink or some kind of infinite water source because while it is a closed system uh sometimes i just find that you just don't want to let that water get too low so having it yeah, you just want to trust me uh so i'm going to start with probably in the back corner so the opposite corner from the room where i walked in right so if we do this and then we walked in here right the opposite corner will be here so i'm going to build my reactor you know one block space away and we're going to start with a reactor, and that's going to be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 6, 6, 5. So that is a 7 by 7, okay? And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? So that in total, it is 7 by 7 by 7. Full beans. And you'll notice that I have exactly the right number of resources to make that happen, I think. And then we're going to use some reactor glass. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm almost certain that I can build and gadget this. So I'm going to start doing that. that cool now uh, I have a few you know what I forgot about the roof I may have forgotten about the roof 
So let me get 25 of those fission reactor casings. Because I always do this, and I promised myself I wouldn't do it this time, but I always forget that the control rod assemblies on the mechanism generators don't go on the actual roof. They go one block space down, right? Am I right about that? I'm pretty sure I'm right. hope I'm right, because that's what we're doing. Um, so you should be done now, and you shouldn't need that. Boom and boom. And then we should be able to intangible our way through this. No, probably because they're tile entities. Fair enough. I'm assuming intangible doesn't work on a tile entity, which is fair. So then we're going to have our control rod assemblies. We're going to have these dudes, which come straight down on all of these. And that should be four more remaining, which is just enough to go here. Perfect. Cool. Uh, so now if we put our reactor glass in, I believe this is enough to form the multi-block. Am I right about that? Hooray! We have a fission reactor. How quick and easy was that? Super quick and easy. I love it. Now we're going to need uh, some imports and outputs. So I'm going to want to have... Um, I may have made this a little compact for my redstoning, but we'll be fine. We'll figure it out. Uh, not saturating condensers, but fission reactor ports. So we're gonna want a port for water to go in. Uh, we're gonna want a port for um, reactor uh, fuel to go in. And we're probably also gonna want a port, and I'm gonna put it here for the output. And if I use my configurator, we can specify output waste. Pretty sure green is input. And then the final one is output coolant, which I usually stick over on this side. Cool. So you'll output coolant. Uh, then I usually get a sink. I may or may not have a water bucket. I need to find like a nice water bucket thing that I can do. That's like a super easy way to just make a water bucket. <laughs> We can pop here, and then we're back. That is kind of cool, isn't it? Isn't it cool? Uh, now to fill this guy up with water, I'm gonna use laser IO because that is, uh, as far as I know, one of the fastest ways that you can fill up things with water. Uh, so for that, we are going to need, um, I want a bunch of overclockers. And then I wouldn't mind some node overclockers. And I'm going to refresh your memories on how overclockers and node overclockers work and what they do, because they're both important. Uh, so the overclockers, as we know, because uh, we've used them a lot, when we set this guy to extract, he can only transfer a thousand millibuckets or one bucket every second. That's the best. But if we throw overclockers in there, we can increase that. The most you can do is four overclockers in an extract card, and that will allow you to do eight buckets a second which is cool, okay? Um, now, what side is, uh, that's gonna be confusing. I'll figure it out. Uh, let's say, so west maybe? Yeah, west. Hey, look at that. So we're transferring, uh, you know, a bunch of water in there, which is great. Now, if we were to add on the down another extractor, you will note that if we do this, it's not running. Nodes can only tick each side of themselves once, and an extractor counts as a ticker. Inserters do not. So when you're extracting, it can only handle one card at a time per side, okay? So if we add a node overclocker in there, it adds that uh, one, but that has to be put on the down side, okay? So now you'll see both extractor cards can run, but only two uh, because I only put one node overclocker in there, right? So if I throw another one of these dudes in here and we bump this up, Okay, notice it's not running, but if I throw another node overclocker in there, boom. 
And node overclockers can go up to eight because you get one for free and then the next eight. So that's as high as node overclockers can go. Cool? How great is that? So now we're getting lots and lots and lots of water. That's probably enough water for now. For this size reactor, that should be sufficient. But we'll keep an eye on it and we'll add more cards and overclockers as we need in the future. Cool? So uh, the fission reactor is complete. We are ready to roll. The only other thing we might want to play with is the fission reactor logic adapter, uh, which will prevent our reactor from exploding if terrible things happen. Uh, but we'll handle that in a minute. Next up, I would like to build my turbine. So the turbine design that I've gone with is going to be a uh, five by five. So I'm gonna start here, two, three, four, five. And that should be nicely centered on that dude. Five by five by nine. Hey, look at that, perfect. Is that nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's actually 10. So cool. No, nope. I knew I counted that wrong. I could tell. After playing Minecraft for 13 years, your brain just tells you, hey, Dyer, you did that wrong. Did you know that? Cool. I think that's right. Seven. Yeah, I had a feeling that was wrong too. One, two, yeah, no, that's definitely wrong. I had a feeling that was wrong. Again, my brain told me, hey, that feels wrong to me, Dr. Wolf. You did that incorrectly. I mean, you sometimes still do it wrong, don't get me wrong, but your brain tells you. It's like, hey, that was wrong. And then structural glass on the sides rather than reactor glass. Reactor glass for reactors, structural glass uh, for turbines. Now turbines get uh, a very specific design because there's a bunch of stuff that has to go into them. Uh, so let me bring up my reminder of what we're doing here. Um, all right, so the top of the reactor should be all vents, okay? And then on the sides of the reactor should be all vents. You'd think after making as many of these as I have, I'd remember this stuff, but I don't because I always just look it up when it's time to happen. There's a good, there's a good entry on the FTB wiki. And then in the center here should be saturating conventures, condensers. Okay, and then the next layer down will be all vents again, except for three. So it should look like that. Okay, cool. Uh, and then the rest can be glass for those pieces. And inside will be seven of these and two electromagnetic coils, okay? And then from here, you're gonna get your eight pressure dispersers. And there's rules to this. So depending on the size of the reactor that you're building, uh, you can follow said rules. Um, did I do this wrong? I did. And in the very center will be the rotational complex, which I thought I made. There it is, yes. Nope, just didn't see it. Cool. And then on the outside of this bit uh, will be the last few turbine vents, is that right? So. So this layer should have actually been three vents. It's very confusing to follow. Uh, but there, this layer actually, I don't think it matters, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna match what's on the, the wiki just so that I'm following it correctly. 
this can be glass. I'm gonna make the front like that. Cool. Um, and then the front will always be glass. And then you guys, instead of glass here, I don't think it super matters to be honest with you. Um, this is layer two. So it'll be three, three, two. Right, so three, three, we'll make this one glass. Okay, and then the next layer should be six of these turbine vents. Why do I feel like I have too many turbine vents? Why do I feel like I have too many turbine vents? I should have 45 of them. I put them on the top here, right? Yep, so there's nine there. There's nine there, that's 18. There's nine minus one there, so that's 26. And six. Huh, that's funny. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna say, forget about it. I'm just gonna put them all around here. Yeah, it's funny, the design on it tells you how many you need on the wiki. Have I run into this before? It feels familiar. That should be fine. So a three by three, a three by three, and then you can also have a three by three, and we'll just call it a day. Cool? Works for me. Uh, now straight down from there, you're gonna have this, and then you're gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight turbine blades. And they'll fill it all the way up for you. Cool. And then if you want, you can do a uh, building gadget to get this. And that should be cool. And that's formed. Beautiful. So now what we have to do is get... Um, we're going to want to pump the steam into here. Um, so the turbine gets what? There's a turbine valve. Did I make those? I made the reactors. I don't know if I made the turbine valves. So let me get two of them. Probably only need one of them, but I think it makes two at a time, doesn't it? Yeah. So no big. Yeah, I told you I got most of the stuff that I need. Um, and this is where your steam will come out. So steam comes out here and into there. So for that, I'm gonna use an ultimate pressurized tube. And I always forget exactly how many of these we need. We might need multiple, I forget. Cause I built big reactors, I built smaller reactors. I forget, you know, exactly how much is created and how much is generated and all that stuff. So we'll get, you know, the ultimate pressurized tubes and I might wind up doing like three of these, okay? And then we can use this guy set to extract. So that'll pull the steam out of here. So it'll have water, fuel, it'll generate steam and waste, right? And the steam will go into there and it'll spin the turbine. Um, and I think we also actually do need the turbine valve for power, okay? So you can go here and we can get a plug which, guess what, the uh, the item model was fixed in the update. And you can go on the generators network, cool. And usually what I'll do to prevent this guy, because he will occasionally, um, he, will, he will overflow eventually, um, which is not the end of the world, but it can be. Because uh, sometimes when it overflows energy, it's a problem. Um, because I think when it overflows energy, it might start backstuffing the steam and then this thing will overheat and explode in a very deadly and horrible way, which we don't want to have happen. Um, you'll notice I've built my reactor awfully close to my base because I am feeling pretty confident. Okay, uh, so we're gonna get a new flux point here. That should be fine. And I'm going to add you to the generators network. So you void energy, but I'm gonna give your priority negative a thousand. Okay, um, which is good, except I probably don't want you running just yet. 
So maybe... Maybe what I do... I'm just going to disconnect you for a minute and we'll, we'll re-add you later. So you're ready to go, but you'll void energy now. And that'll be cool. Um, unlimited transfer, so that's cool. So what will eventually happen is we'll have a big battery, the turbine will fill up the battery, and then any excess energy will be voided into the trash can. Should be cool. All right, so that was easy peasy. So we've got turbine, we've got water, uh, we've got all the good stuff ready to go here. And now all I have to do is really think about setting up, um, I'll probably set it up maybe up here for a change. I could have like a nice little... Uh, Oh, and the good news, by the way, is this this reactor is smart about how it stores its data. So don't worry about breaking blocks unless you break them all. Cool. So you will be output when the reactor reaches a dangerous temperature. Okay, and you will be an activation signal. So what you should do is basically just be a simple not gate, right? Uh, sort of, but I always like to have my own uh, control bit going on. So let's do a logic guy from RF Tools Utility. And that should be quick and easy. Shouldn't you be like making more things? Oh, you don't know how to make redstone torches. Oh, well, that's my mistake. That is my mistake. There you go. Okay. So effectively what we're going to want is we want... All right, and I want redstone. I really like this this redstone quill thing. Like, this is an awesome mod. I'm just saying. Okay, so, uh, and we should rotate this guy such that this should be the output face. And then I'm just gonna have a nice old lever over here that's gonna control whether or not the reactor is allowed to run. Okay, so what we're gonna say is if, and always face from this direction because you can kind of see what's up. So if A is on and B is off, you should be on. And any other situation, it should be off, right? So like if any of the A's are off, it should be off for sure. And if A is on, but we're not doing anything with C, so we don't care about it. Uh, if B turns on, so that means we've output a high temperature threshold, then you should be off, right? So if the temperature turns on, that, that should be cool, right? So right now, because the temperature is not high, this should turn on the signal. And if it got high, which we can simulate with a lever here, right? So this is simulating the lever that would turn off the signal, right? So if it overheats, it immediately turns off. And if we check this guy, he should be active, I think. Yeah, see the activate button's grayed out? And now the activate button's, yeah. So it's obviously not running because we had no fuel, but you get the idea. So that should work. I like it. All right, so the next thing we need to do, um, is pop home with our awesome little portal that we've got now. I love it. It's so cool. Sorry, it just brings me so much joy. It's really the coolest. Let's talk real quick about the fuel that we're going to need um, for this process. So I can get rid of all these guys and this guy and that guy. Uh, that should be cool. I'm going to get rid of most of these to-dos for now. I'll leave that one up there. And maybe these guys is a maybe remember it kind of deal. Uh, and these guys are already taught to the system, so we don't need to do none of that right? So that's good. All right, so let's review what we need to get fuel, um, because we're going to want to do that next episode. So it's mechanism fission fuel? Yes. So that's the main thing that we want to get. So to get fission fuel, 
Uh, we need to get uranium hexafluoride, which comes from hydrofluoric acid and uranium oxide. Oh my goodness, all of them have the same icon up there. Or are they just not rendering at all? I don't know. Um, and then hydrofluoric acid comes from sulfuric acid. Let's do it this way. Hydrofluoric acid is this and this. This is this and this. This is that. And sulfur dioxide comes from sulfur of some kind. And then... Uranium hexafluoride also needs uranium oxide, but luckily that's easy. That's just yellow cake uranium, which is uranium ingots. So next episode, we'll come back and we'll, I'm going to do all the machines between episodes. So I'll have them all ready like I did in today's where I had all the reactor components ready. And then I will uh, come back next episode and figure out a way to keep these guys from showing up so much. That's right. I probably won't figure that out. But what I will do is get this production line going so that we'll have fissile fuel. And then uh, depending on how I think I can get this going pretty quickly if I make all the machines ahead of time. And then what we're going to want to do is have nuclear waste processing and get ready to do plutonium and polonium. Uh, now, interestingly, the solar neutron reactor is going to be a little bit of a problem. Because I need sunlight, don't I? Yes, I do. And I built this way underground. So that's a problem for future Dyer. Current Dyer is not going to worry about it. Future Dyer is going to solve it. Whether that involves teleportation of some kind, I don't know. Pretty sure nuclear waste is not allowed to go through uh, quantum entanglopers. But I guess we'll find out. I'm pretty sure it's blacklisted from that, but I might be wrong. Oh, we'll find out next episode. For now, Doll 20 sign off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We might just have one really long pipe. <laughs> for now, take it easy.